Hey everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Matt Pullen and I am going to take you through a session today looking at how you can supercharge your use of Keynote. We want to dive into some of the additional things that this fantastic app can really enable you to do. A little bit about me, uh, I am an APLS in the UK as well as being a senior lecturer in the University of South Wales where I support future teachers with their understanding of the role of technology. And in that role, I get to explore lots of fun and innovative ways that we can use all of these tools that we're familiar with on our devices to really think about how they can engage and enthuse learners in our classroom. And that's really what I wanted to go through today. So I've got a few different activities that I thought I would share with you. So in this session, like I said, we're going to explore Keynote from a teaching and learning perspective and using it to really support students and teachers to have exciting and engaging ways to create and share their learning. So let's get started with the presentation and how I've put this together, because I get asked about this um, quite a lot of times in terms of like that personalization of approach. So if I come out of my presentation for a second and just pull apart what I've just done in those first uh, couple of slides, the first thing you'll notice is that on the side here, I've actually got a small video of me as my Memoji character. And I've just layered this behind the picture Memoji with some, some icons on it. And then there's a third element here, which is a video with a timer on it. Now, something which is really, really great in Keynote, and this is a, a fairly recent update, came back, uh, I think it was around June time of this year, is that when you add in a video, it will now play across all of your slides. So in these two slides, I've got the same video here. I've got the same video uh, on this slide, uh, again, with the timer, etc. And all I've simply done is just started this video to play, and then when I change the slide, it plays across both slides. So just to jump in that again, just to demonstrate. So you'll notice that the timer is going to start playing uh, and the video of me moving. You'll see that, you know, if I hover over it, you can see that both of those videos are playing. And then if I change the slide, the background over here is going to change. But that timer carries on playing um, and the video of me carries on playing as well. Now this for me came about really because I wanted to add that kind of personal touch to make it look like I was presenting when I was giving presentations to, to my students, but I'm not necessarily um, wanting to be in the video all the time. So trying to find a way to kind of marry those two things together. And I think it kind of worked quite well. There was there was kind of a, some nice engagement and some, some fun comments from, from my students as I was doing this. And, and it really kind of makes it a little bit more fun to do those things. Now, one thing to kind of go through is is how do you get all of these elements um, into your into your document? Well, the first thing to highlight is this is uh, just a timer. Um, I made this timer. You don't need to go to that extent of making the timer. It really is just a video of, of something. Where I've seen this done fantastically well with, with colleagues, um, and in fact, uh, Martin Coote showed me a, a fantastic uh, version of this, is to actually just use your clock. So if I know that I'm going to use a three minute timer, for example, I'm going to start this timer. And now because, and, and I'm already screen recording this, so I can't demonstrate this, but if you if you use the screen record function, this is now just being created into a video. So it makes it really, really easy for me to create this, and I can just crop out this section of the video to use in my keynote presentation. So a really, really simple and effective tool. Now I'll just stop that because otherwise that's going to go off in a couple of minutes time. So that's how you can get that first element of your clock, which can just be added in. The second element here, which is your uh, Memoji kind of laptop or, or whatever it is you want to, to stand behind. Again, it's a fairly simple approach. Uh, a couple of ways that you can do this. I'm going to show you probably that the easiest way that will be for your students to be able to do it. And that's to go into notes. And I'm going to start a new note and I'm going to activate my emoji keyboard and you'll see that those emojis appear on the side here. If I tap on three dots, I have access to all of my emojis. I can create a new one, etc. So I don't need to have access to iMessages and I can find that emoji with a laptop that I want and I'm just going to add that into a note. Now at this point, that's that's in my kind of uh, in, in my device for me to be able to use. 
So a couple of things I can do, I can tap and hold and I can share this, which will basically allow me to um, save this image onto my device. Or a quicker way is to tap and hold and open up Keynote and drop that image onto the page. So there I have that image. Now the one thing that you will need to do at this point is obviously crop out because I don't want to have my head here because that's going to be done in a, in a slightly different way. So to do that, I'm just going to double tap on the image itself, slide down on that blue dot above, you'll see it kind of starts to crop out the image behind and just kind of layer that at the top of that laptop. Tap done and it's just removed my head from that laptop but still gives me that kind of effect behind it. Now the last thing to do then is if you want to add in your Memoji video. Now this is one where you will have to focus on utilising the tools in iMessage. So this is something which is going to be restricted to, to the tools that you have. But just wanted to show you the approach. You obviously could do this without the moving Memoji if you wanted to. But it is fun to have that Memoji on the screen as well. So just to identify here, I don't have the option to record this as a video. This is very much about having the the front facing camera that allows the face recognition. So I'm gonna jump into my messages for this and you'll see that I kind of set this up based on, um, you know, I send this to myself so it doesn't have to disturb other people. And I've just selected the Memoji here and then I can just tap on that head in order to have that record. And you'll see that that's exactly what I've done here. I've just sent that video to myself. So I just record for about 30 seconds without actually saying anything, just by moving my face, moving my head, moving my lips. And that's then given me this video. And in the same way as before, if I tap on that video, it gives me the option to save that video where I can then use that in the keynote presentation. So let's jump back to that keynote. If I go to plus, go to my photos, here's that video that I created before. And it's just going to give me that uh, PNG video, which is which is fantastic, where I can just layer that over, arrange it so that my head drops behind um, the element of the laptop that I want. And then I have that kind of intro element that you see over here. So again, it's just a fun little way to just add that personal touch to a presentation. And it can be great when students get to explore those things. And like I said, if you can't do the video element in here, you could just simply add in the uh, Memoji that you have as the still image and just play around with maybe a timer on the screen or whatever it might be. Okay, so that's kind of the first little activity that I wanted to explore. This second activity is something which utilizes some of those uh, transition video elements that are new to Keynote, but kind of takes it in a, in a slightly different direction. So I'm going to play this through first. This is about creating a virtual tour, utilizing maps, or it could be utilizing anything from your camera, but then using that video within Keynote to really enhance the elements that you can share through the video. So I'm going to start this. This is um, a flyover view of London, but I've done some things in this that have personalized this to how I want to look at it. So as we fly over London, I can drop in some markers, which give you know some information maybe about the place that you're visiting. As we move to the next location, I can drop in another marker, again, with some added information about where we're visiting. And all I'm simply doing is tapping on the screen when I want to bring in that next element. And I'll show you exactly how we put this together um, in just a moment. So as we move to this next building, I can drop in my next element, which just highlights you know, some, some information about that. And then again, tap to remove it from the screen. And then as we fly on to our next location, I can tap again and tap to remove it. So a really, really simple and straightforward process. And I've also done this with just video in the garden. Now, not as much exciting stuff happening in my garden. Um, I created this, we're, we're in lockdown at the moment, so there's not a lot that I can sort of go out and, and explore. But the same idea is here. So I'm gonna play the video and then tap to have that information drop down. Again, tap to have the information, tap to remove it. And then finally tap to have the information and tap to remove it. So that's that's the approach, that's how you put those things together. So how does that actually look 
on the screen. Well, all it is is the same video. If you look on every single slide here, it's exactly the same video. And then on each individual slide where I want to add in an element, I've just created this uh, this image here of like a drop pin um, and, a, and an information tile that can go on each of the slides. So let's have a look at how you would actually put that together then. I'm going to come out and go into Maps. And let's imagine I wanted to create for you um, a guided tour of the place that I live. So this is where I live. This is Chepstow in Wales. Um, and I want to take you on a guided tour. And now again, the same process applies as you used before. And that is, we're just going to do a screen record. So just to go through this process and then I'll show you how to build this in. So let's imagine I've used the drop down from the top. I've tapped on screen record. I'm starting to record my screen. I'm in my map. And now I'm just going to start to navigate around. So I can use that kind of idea of pinch to zoom. I might pause for a moment on the place that I want to talk about. I might then zoom back out. I might then zoom back in again. And again, this is the creative element from individuals, how they want to explore the map around them. I live in a two-dimensional part of the world. We don't get um, full three-dimensional mapping just yet, so we have to make do with bird's eye views. But it still adds that element of detail to the map that you're creating. So you could carry on doing that, exploring different parts of the map. Obviously, you know, you could do this over a bigger region and start to explore a journey around places. And when you're done, you simply just tap, obviously, on the red record button at the top, and that's going to add that to your camera roll. When you then jump in here, the simple act is to just add that video to a number of slides. Now, the key thing is you would have needed to have made a note of the places that you're going to visit in your video. So this is where the, the kind of additional learning tool is that students would have done some planning, they would have done some research into the different elements so that they can then add in their own pins for the next step that we'll look at now. So let's look at how we would build one of those then. So if I just go to a blank slide on my screen and I'm going to go to the plus go to photos, I'm going to find that video that I've just recorded here and I'm going to add that to my slide. Now obviously you can make this bigger and smaller and zoom in and all of those things. So I'm just going to add that to the full slide. Now in my video I visited four different places. So slide one is going to just be the video as it is and all I'm going to do is just duplicate that slide now it's a video, so it's going to take a little bit of time. It's not as quick and simple as just copying a slide nothing in. So the, depending on the length of your video, it might take longer. And the first place that I visited was Chepstow Castle. So I'm going to go to a plus and I'm going to add in a holding card. And I'm just going to put in some information. Now this is obviously where your learners in the classroom would, would do their research. They would do some more information, uh, checking about those things. They'd start to build up this virtual tour. And I want to add in a pin as well, so I'm just going to be a little bit creative here um, and just change this. I'll make it red. Um, let's put a triangle in as well, so it looks like a pin. So I'm just going to make, just using some of the simple shapes, um, and obviously you can spend a lot more time doing this, a lot neater than I have. But I'm just going to add in those two elements onto my page. So I've got my information and I've got my pin. Now, the second thing I need to do here on this page then is I'm going to animate that pin and I'm going to have it build in with uh, what would look nice. I think possibly the drop animation would probably look really good here. Uh, so let me just find that on the screen. There we go. And just make sure I've selected that. There we go, because it kind of gives that effect of, you know, it, it's a pin dropping down. Um, and actually, just with, with the information, I might have that copy the same approach as well and just drop in. Just make sure we've got that selected in. There we go. And then the final thing is I want it to happen at the same time. So I'm going to tap on the three bars at the top here and just make sure that, oops, just make sure that that 
build with build two. So if we just play that, we'll see now as I tap the screen, both of those drop down together. And then we just continue to build through. So I'm going to duplicate that slide. Again, it's going to take a couple of seconds just to copy the, the video across. Um, again, just, just to highlight if, if you have a bit longer. And once that's done, on this second slide now, or third slide, sorry, the next place that I visited was called St Mary's Church. And I might want to move that marker on the page. Uh, you know, this, I might think that the, the, the mark here. The, the one thing to highlight is, is kind of every point you want to really make sure that the, the thing you're focusing on is in the middle of the screen, but then you also don't want to have your marker directly over it. So you're kind of creating here a little bit blind, but there's no harm in obviously playing that slide, playing it through those first points and just checking that it appears in the right place. So you just continue to build that through. So if I just play those three slides, and they're not perfectly created at the moment because I'm I'm going through quite quickly, but if I just play those through, I start my video. Video is going to then move around. It's going to locate that first location, at which point I tap on the screen. That gives me the information. It can be as much information as you need. I tap the screen again to remove it. I tap the screen again to have that second bit of information and so on and so forth. You would continue to do that as you build your tour around those different places. And now, like I said, exactly the same approach here with a video tour. So it doesn't have to just be maps. It could be a video tour of a location where I've actually just added in a video as I've panned around my back garden, but it could be you know, on location anywhere, students doing that. And then again, just adding in those different kind of you know location pointers on the screen to mark where you are. Now, something that kind of came out from, from this was, you know, because I do live in a two-dimensional world, according to Apple Maps, how would you be able to then enhance this slide to have a different view? Well, it's as simple as finding an image or going and taking an image, if you, if you have the freedom at the moment to do that, of the place. And actually, rather than just having the drop pin and the text, you could also have a photo drop down as well at the same time which shows different angles and different views of that location. So a real kind of nice three-dimensional project for students to play around with to really build up this kind of virtual tour idea. And obviously it doesn't have to be maps or videos of a place. It could be a virtual tour of some writing that you've done. It could be a virtual tour of a of a 3D project that someone's made, of a painting that someone's put together. It could be almost anything, but the idea is that you're just using the video, which continuously plays, and the markers to lay over the top of it. So in this next activity, this is again a, a simple little fun trick that I've done using, I suppose, some of the tools that we've already looked at but just changing kind of how you use it. And this is making a fake FaceTime call. Now I've done this with my students in university as a way to kind of engage them in learning to kind of bring that shock factor because you're not expecting it, but also a different way to introduce topics in the classroom. Uh, and this is basically what it looks like. I would have my screen up. Um... Hi, Dad. Sorry to bother you, but I've got an awesome idea for your students. And that's really how I used it in the classroom. So the way it's built is there's just a screenshot of your iPad um, within the middle of your presentation, you know, or it could be this, the slide that you're on. Um, you just you'd have that and then you build the next elements in. The second screen is just a screenshot of, of my device. So all I've done is phoned from a, diff a secondary device onto my iPad to bring up the, the FaceTime kind of calling screen so that I can just take a screenshot of that whilst it's happening. And then in the third shot, I've done the same thing, but I've cropped out kind of the buttons that appear on the screen when you do a FaceTime call so that I can add them over the top. And then fundamentally, this is just a video that sits underneath everything else. So it looks like it's a FaceTime video, but it isn't a FaceTime video. 
So that process is really, really quick and simple to do. Like I said, it just sits within your presentation where it looks like you're being interrupted by a phone call, but fundamentally you're not being interrupted by anything because you've prepped it and set it all up yourself. I've also added in, if I just go out a second, I've added in some music. So I just created a garage band uh, ringtone, but you could add in elements in your own way here to just devise how that would, would play as you tap on the screen. Now, obviously, a somewhat annoying ringtone is going to add to the effect because it's going to make everybody look. So let's have a look at how you would put that together then. First thing you need to do is obviously get this screenshot of someone calling you. So I'm going to go on my phone a second and very quickly go into FaceTime call myself so that I get up this screen. So let's just quickly put that in place. Now, this is a perfect opportunity to highlight the changes that have happened in iPad OS. So obviously, this screen I have here is what you might be used to if you're using iPad OS 13 or earlier. The new way that uh, FaceTime calls uh, kind of interrupt you is a slightly different view. So I'm going to just add that in now. So I'm going to go to a blank screen. I'm going to go to the plus and I've just called myself. Um, I couldn't show you this live because obviously it doesn't work live and I'm going to choose the image and here's the image here and it's actually this element that I want at the top I don't need the rest of this um, I obviously I could add it in but I just want it to make it look like this has appeared on the screen so I'm going to recreate what happens in a FaceTime call so to do that I'm just going to crop out everything else apart from that part of the screen that I need and tap done and there we go that it's as easy as that. Now on my screen, I might move this off the screen, duplicate that slide, move it onto the screen, gives me that little bit of, of um, mo motion on the screen. I'm going to tap back on this original slide, go to transition, add transition and add in magic move. And you'll see how that just pops down. I don't need to duplicate it because I've already duplicated the slide. I'm going to also tap in here though on the settings and I want that to be a little bit quicker because it goes in a little bit too slow. I can just check how that works if I just play that. There we go, that looks a little bit nicer. And that's just going to appear on my screen. And then you just continue to build your slide as you usually would. So, you know, for example, I might have on this slide here that I'm, I'm doing some work. Um, I might have... <coughs> I might have, apologies, I might have my intro slide that I was using before, so I'm just going to drop this in. Make that big. So you get the idea now. Make sure that that is arranged to the back. And copy that image onto this slide too. And again, just make sure it's arranged to the back. And then again, if I just play this through, tap on play, tap on the screen, and it looks like you're being called because that FaceTime image kind of appears at the top of your screen where it would do if you were being called. The second thing then is I'm just going to jump out and very quickly go to GarageBand and make a, a simple ringtone and just go through this process of how you would do this. So let's just, uh, let's go to Live Loops. It's going to open up something here, just put, put some music together just to show the process. And again, if you were doing this with your learners in the classroom, you could do some fantastic work really looking at sort of different ringtones that you could create and it could become a music task, etc. But I'm just going to quickly record something on the screen. Well, that would be annoying if that was your ringtone, but we'll we'll go with it for now. Um, I'm just going to come out. So tap and hold. I'm going to share that. And I'm going to share it as a uh, ringtone. Would be if I wanted to actually have it as a ringtone. In my case, I'm going to share it as a song. Don't worry too much about all of these things. Um, keep it as standard. We were only using it as a basic ringtone. And I'm going to then save this by opening it in... Um, into files because then that way I can find this when I go back into Keynote um, so I can add it as an element in Keynote. So again, it's just going to take a, a few seconds to just export that song um, just as it creates it, put that together. 
I'm then going to tap on save to files and just make sure that I've saved it somewhere that I'm going to be able to find on my device. So I'm just going to keep it on my iPad and just put it in GarageBand for iOS. And if I go back now to Keynote on this second slide, I'm probably going to want it to play the music here. So I'm going to go to add, insert from, find that song here. So this is the one, my song three. And there we go, I have that sound file on the screen as well. Now again, I need to animate that. I want that to start as the audio and I want it to build in straight after the transition. And then let's just play that slide through from the start. So I might be talking about the introduction to my session here and then all of a sudden I get interrupted with the sound. There we go. Again, like I said, worst ringtone ever. And then the final thing to do is obviously just have that those final elements of the video that you want to have in. And again, the same process of just cropping out the on-screen FaceTime tools and where they might look on your device, depending on how your device is oriented, um, so that it looks like there's that transition. So again, if I just play those three slides through. Hi, Dad. Sorry to bother you. You get that full idea of that kind of interrupted FaceTime call. And then obviously the video here is whatever you want to introduce your session. It could be uh, somebody that you've, you've asked from a, a member of your family. It could be that you found a video of something, you've made your own video, it doesn't really matter. The idea is that you just design these things as a different way to engage your learners in the classroom. So let's move on to our next activity then. And this is looking at the drawing tools that you can activate within Keynote, but utilizing some of the other skills that you can bring into this as well as animation and just taking some, some ideas from, from other elements that you might see um, in other pieces of work. What I've done here is I have started to add in some photos taken basically from clips um, where I've utilized some of the skills within clips and I'll show you that in a second and then started to draw directly over the top of those images to leave me with a, a picture that I can utilize. So I'll, I'll go through the, the full steps to, to show you what I'm getting at. If I jump into clips, here is the video that I've taken of uh, it's just my son jumping from from one obstacle to the other obstacle um, and if I just play that through it's just as simple as that and what I've done in the clip then is gone into effects and gone into filters and I've changed the filter to ink just so I've got this kind of drawn element uh, and this will make sense in a second when I come to to show this and then within this, um, I've just simply recorded this as a video and exported it to my camera roll. So I'm just going to save that video now. And then in this next step, uh, just go into my photos, find that video that I've created. And all I did was just take a screenshot. So using the, the physical button set screenshot, just move through the slides to just get a couple of you know frames in between each one to end up with probably keep that one there that one there there we go you get the idea so i'm just taking lots and lots of screenshots that i've got collected here and that's basically what i've added in to keynote so again if i just start a new slide here just choose a blank slide Go to my camera roll, you'll see that all of those pictures that I've just uh, added uh, are here. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Uh, very quickly, if I tap on any one of those pictures, it's going to add it to the slide for me. I can make that, you know, the, the size I want on the slide. I personally would keep it uh, the, the kind of default size, it just means that your image when you start drawing is going to be in the same place. And then what I'm going to do is make sure that that image is selected, tap on the paintbrush, go to style, and I'm just going to make it uh, more opaque. So take it down to probably about 30%, just so you can still see the picture. But what's going to happen is as I start to draw on the image, my drawing is going to appear over the top, so it's easier for me to see. 
Uh, and the one last thing to do is just arrange it just to make sure that it's the back thing on the screen because otherwise as you start to draw your drawing disappears behind you you can't see it. Now the other way that you can add these in as well just a bit of a, a keynote kind of shortcut here. If I bring my photos in split screen and these are all in order on the screen here so this is the first one through to, to the last one I can tap on one of the images and then keeping hold of that select all of those images so that I have hold of them um, in my hand I've got all nine here and then drag them over to the thumbnails on this side and drop them and that's just going to create those nine slides for me um, instantly on my screen and it will just just make sure that they're all in the right place on each of the screen so you just see that each one of those is on there all I need to do is obviously just change the background of the slide so if I come in here uh, I'm just going to make sure that all of these because it's gone onto a slide with text on it I don't want the text so again paintbrush go to the master and actually I just want to use a blank one so there's no text on it at all um, and then go through that whole process again of just making sure that each image the opacity is just taken down to like I said about 30% so you could just see them through so that's how I've created uh, all of these slides here so what I'll do is just go through this process. So like I said, all I've added in is this drawing over the top. So with my Apple Pencil, I've tapped on the screen to bring up the drawing tools. You can also find those drawing tools if you tap on the plus and go to drawing. It'll take you to the same thing. And I'm actually going to use the fill tool, which is this one here. And I'll show you how I've done this on this slide. So selecting the fill tool, I'm just going to draw and complete those shapes. So I'm using it as a drawing tool, but it automatically fills in. So you'll see that I'm kind of just going over it. And actually, if you go over the same line, you just get that very thin line. And that's fine because it's going to still give you that kind of uh, idea of what it is you're drawing around. So I'll just do this as crisp, quick as possible just to show you the idea. Now, with large shapes like this, what I tend to do is to add in a little bit of detail is just kind of jiggle the pen around quite a bit inside the shape and then when you finish the shape off you kind of get some of those etches and the idea isn't really to, to make it a perfect copy of what you've done it's just to use the picture behind as a bit of a template to get the impression and you'll see what this is going to look like uh, in a second when I'm finished so I'm just going to fill in just all of these kind of wrinkles I suppose they are on the t-shirt just gives a little bit of texture to what you're drawing. Makes it still look hand-drawn, but if I was to draw this myself as a hand-drawn image, I can tell you now it would not look very good at all. So I'm just cheating through that process. So I'm going to do the same thing then on this last image just to complete my set of images. So again, you can just see I'm kind of using the pen, but going back over in a slightly different angle so that the, some of the lines are a little bit thicker than others or if I'm doing this kind of big bulk colouring in section I'll just run the pen around and again it doesn't matter if it's perfectly the same sort of shape as you've done before but you get the idea of you know it can block out those wrinkled bits of clothing make it look a little bit like the image underneath and you're just using it the whole time really to just trace some of those shapes always picking out kind of maybe some of the key elements so this bit is his hand a little bit on the arm maybe just to highlight that that's there and that's really it so the final step in all of these is I've got these pictures now from slide uh, let's just double check where I went up to so 37 so 26 to 37 and all I'm going to do here is just delete the background so take this out just delete that on every single picture and you see that I'm just kind of left with that hand-drawn element which doesn't make much sense at the moment because it's not always that easy to work out what it is that I've drawn um, or I've uh, coloured in I suppose in this case but when you start to add them all together it starts to make a lot more sense and then you can be really creative with the output as well so there's my there's my slides kind of created from and if I do that just by tapping on the screen, you can kind of start to see that animation flowing. So I'm just going to select all of those slides. And a couple of things that I want to do here. I want to uh, 
make sure that there's no background on those. Um, so it looks like the I've deleted everything I haven't. It's just there's no background, so the black pen that I've used doesn't show up at all. And I'm going to export these then as an animated GIF. Now, the one thing that I need to just add in here is to make sure that that background is still transparent because I just want the image to show through. I don't want to have um, anything else on the screen because we're going to use this in some, some creative ways afterwards. I also need to just make sure that the slide range that I'm using is correct. So I want this to actually be the full range of those images. So mine start on 26 and end on 37. And then I'm just going to export this out. And then I can save this as an image. Now, if I tap on a new slide, I can then add in that image that I've created or that GIF that I've created. Go to the plus, go to photos, videos, and here is the GIF that I've just created that I can then make bigger on my screen. In fact, I'll make this nice and big on the screen. And then I can just play that through. And so you have that kind of hand-drawn animation that you've just created. And now the other benefit to this is because I've done this in a way that is um, with the transparent background, I actually can put anything I want behind this as well. So I can add in my own background. So just to work on this now, if I take back the pen, for example, let's play that video through to look at where he lands. He lands about here. So why not have something that might look like the edge of a cliff or something? So it looks like he's jumping across a ravine. Now I'm going to do this really, really quickly, but again, you can just imagine that from a student point of view, how they might get really, really creative with this idea of, you know, what what's the story in your kind of drawing? So I'm just going to draw some, some shapes on here. Um, and then he starts... So again, let's just put those to the back. And he starts on a platform probably around here. So let's kind of, actually I don't want to do it in black or brown. Let's do it in like a gray color. Trying to make it look like he's jumped from this platform. And again, I'm just going to drop this, make sure that's behind. Yeah, there we go. So it's very rough. Uh, I get the idea, you know, that I probably could put a lot more time and effort into this to make it look more detailed. Let's just make this look like it's a bit more of a rock face. Um, let's change the colour here, put a bit darker kind of elements on the grass. Hopefully you get the idea of what this could look like. And then when we play this through, it looks like he's jumping across this ravine. And it doesn't have to look perfect, you know, it's clearly animation, um, but but just some different ways that you can have fun with things. Um, and obviously, from my point of view, I have drawn it in black with with there being kind of a transparent colour here. If you wanted it to be filled in, you just, the, the, the other parts would just be coloured in a different colour. So it doesn't have to be black and white, just so happens I've done it in just black pen. You could have done it in a various um, array of pens. But the idea is just something a bit creative, something a little bit different, a little bit artistic, using the animation features, um, you know, within Keynote to be able to export as a GIF and then developing this kind of further aspect of creativity of like, so you've created this jumping or, or motion, whatever it might be. And then what could you do with that? Where could that person be? Now I've done it with drawings. I could just as easily have done that. Oops, didn't want to undo that bit. I could have just as easily done that um, with some shapes. So I could add in some shapes here. So rather than jumping from, uh, you know, something abstract like like the drawings that I've done, actually they there could be something uh, completely different that we could add into that. Uh, I'm just trying to think of just some shapes that I can find on here now. Let's say he's jumping into a boat. Um, I don't know why he'd be jumping into a boat, but you know what? He can jump into a boat. So I can just, again, arrange that, put that behind, play the video, and you get this different idea, okay? So jumping into something else. Um, again, it doesn't even need to be shapes. It could be a, a photo. It could be a photo that you've taken that you then have some animated GIFs, drawings uh, to bring that to life. Lots and lots of different ways that you can use this. Just really wanted to show the different approaches of how you could create that. So the last thing that I just wanted to say is that I have created a YouTube channel full of videos to support you in how you can use these approaches. If you go onto YouTube, you can just search for my name or Think Creative TV 
And you'll be able to find playlists full of different ways that you can use Apple apps in your classroom. Some just getting to know how to use the apps. Others like this one exploring how you can do a 3D mapping example and the fake FaceTime videos that I've already shown you as part of this. But I tried to put together this list of videos just to help you in this kind of remote learning world that we're in. Thank you very much for, for joining in. I hope you've taken some of those ideas and it's it's inspired you to think of ways that you could utilize some of those skills in your own classroom. Really just wanted to highlight that Keynote is, is a hugely diverse app. And I think I, I probably could have done five, six, seven, eight sessions um, just on Keynote and the different things that you could do within Keynote. Um, there's also app design that you could do. There's finite proper um, animation. And I know that you've seen some other sessions earlier today looking at different ways that Keynote can be used. I would just urge you to continue trying out those new things. And really, if you, you're ever trying to create something, Keynote would always be my recommendation as a go-to app. So again, thank you very much for joining in and uh, take care.